In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8, where I'll ask the question, why should I walk in God's law? Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8 says, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Psalm 119 is famous for being the longest chapter in the whole Bible. And it's also famous for being an acrostic. And you don't necessarily get this in English, but it's an acrostic. All the different letters of the Hebrew alphabet start off each one of these sections of poetry. And almost all of it, almost every last section, focuses on the law of God focuses on those words that were delivered through Moses on Sinai and then later through the prophets to communicate what God's will for his people is. And here in the beginning, we see this great picture explaining why you and I should walk in God's law. Here are three thoughts from Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8. Thought number one, seek the Lord. You should walk in God's law if you seek the Lord. If you are to find the Lord, You must go through his law. You must go through that which he's given to us as an explanation of his character. If you would know God, you must learn him through his revelation, through what he has delivered, through the law and the prophets. This is how we learn about God in his nature. This is his special revelation. So for all of those people who are seeking the Lord, or at least claiming to seek the Lord, Here is the place where you find him. You find him in his word. You find him in his law. And this is why you must walk along in it. Thought number two, avoid shame. If you want to avoid shame, and I think all of us do, who likes to feel ashamed? Who likes to feel the weight of judgment pressed upon them? If you want to avoid shame, then you need to know God's law. Because it's ignorance of God's law that ultimately leads to your shame. Because God's law is an expectation that he has for all of his creatures to follow. And it's God's law that helps us to realize the difference between the Lord in his holiness and ourselves in our sinfulness. God's law makes it painfully clear that we have not lived up to the perfect standard that he has set. We have not lived up to the glorious truths that he has revealed. In our manner of living, we violate the good things that he has commanded us to do. And we do so regularly. And half the time, we don't even care that we did it. Because of this, we recognize that we all, as sinful people, bear shame because of our wicked deeds, thoughts, and desires. Because we've sinned against God in all these different ways, we are going to feel shame. Because we fail to live up to the standards that he has set for us, we're going to experience this terrible emotion of shame. But if you would avoid it, if you would not bring dishonor to yourself and others, then you must walk in God's law. Because it's only through walking in God's law that you can avoid the shame that is inherent to man. Thought number three, praise faithfully. We praise God, and oftentimes we think, well, as long as I'm giving God praise, then that's good enough. But that isn't the truth. The fact of the matter is that the Lord must be praised, and he must be praised in particular ways. And the way that you know how to properly praise the almighty creator of the universe is through his law. So as you read more and more of God's commands for his people, you start to come up with a good understanding of how the Lord desires to be praised by his creation. We start to see that, oh, well, we can't praise multiple things. We can praise the Lord and the Lord alone. We can't worship God and something else. He won't tolerate that. We start to see that we can't just pay in lip service. It can't just be a half-hearted sort of praise, that he won't tolerate that, that he sees right through the acts that we so frequently try to get over with. 
But as we read more and more of God's law, we recognize how we ought to approach him. That we approach him in humility, recognizing that the only reason we're able to approach him at all is because he has revealed himself to us through his word and even more fully through his son, Christ Jesus. We start to understand the great redemptive acts that he has done. And we realize why he is definitely worthy of all of our praise. It's for these reasons that we should walk in God's law. We should identify these are the things that God has told us to do, that he expects of his people, and we walk along in them because we want to bring honor and glory to our almighty and all-powerful creator. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Psalm 119. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.